hole in the caster housing is pop off the cap. On the inside of the caster housing, you'll notice that it has a bolt on the end of the caster stem. What I'm going to do is wedge my screwdriver in here and then turn Once the nut is cleared, we can remove the stem. And what you're going to notice are the ball bearings are going to fall out. The center chase and the internal race has remained in place. Now, if this has occurred, generally heat will have been built up during the breakdown process that will sometimes seize this internal chase to the caster housing wall. And next we're going to show you how to remove the internal chase if you can't simply tap it out. So now that we've separated the, the uh, caster stem from the caster housing, and in many cases, what we're going to be dealing with is the caster housing on a power mobility device, which is slightly larger than this, which makes it a little bit easier to work on. Now, we notice that the, that the chase is still inside, and what we're going to do is try to get the chase out. The right way to get the chase out is to utilize an appropriately sized socket so that we can put it down on the inside and the way we know what size is appropriate is we have the replacement bearing it should be just a little bit smaller than the chase of the replacement bearing so that it will fit through the middle of the housing and when we apply pressure to it we should be able to tap it out rather easily uh, the problem with using chisels and things like that is the uh, chase gets sideways and becomes wedged within the housing and becomes more and more difficult to get out the harder we hit. So what we're going to do is put that in there and then we're going to tap it out and it's going to pop right out. Now if we have one that is stuck in and will not come out What we would do is take the hacksaw, cut a relief groove in the, keeping in mind that we're only going to cut on the draw, not on the push, only cutting on the draw. We're going to cut a relief groove in the chase. Once the relief groove is, is cut in the chase, and that's only after we were not able to do it the other way. We're going to go back to our, our uh, socket. It's going to be placed inside the housing and then we're going to tap it out like that. That is the easiest way to get these chases out of a caster housing. Now, if we're going to replace the bearing we want to make sure that the bearing is lined up. Because we don't want to start it in at an angle because what starts to happen is, is it uh, begins to get bigger and put more pressure on the, on the walls of the caster housing. Now in this case, I'm going to use one that's almost exactly the same size as the uh, as the bearing, and I'm going to tap it in. And voila, it has been set 
We're going to do the same thing for the top bearing. Now it's not going to go in so easily. We're going to put this one in there. Give it a tap to get it seated where it goes in its chase way. The next step is to reassemble the caster housing and the caster stem. So you want to make sure that you have your, your washer on the bottom of the caster stem. We're going to place the housing over it or the stem through the housing. We're going to place a washer on the inside and we are going to replace the nut. And again, we're going to use the mechanical advantage inside the, uh, the system to actually wedge the to wedge the nut against the inside of the housing. We're going to tighten it up. until we get it back to where it's at the proper elevation and works appropriately. Okay, what I'm going to do is open up the top of this, removing the cap. Sound of the dog. So what I'm going to do is use the appropriately sized ratchet with the socket and a pair of vice grips. So what we're going to do is put the nut back on the thread once we get, get it broken loose so that we can actually tap the caster stem out of the caster housing. Okay, now that we have the wheel removed and the stem out, uh, I've placed it over on the other side under the, uh, under the other caster to kind of balance this a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to tap out the top bearing. And what you're going to notice is that if I can get it, it just pops right out like that. Now in the middle there's going to be a spacer that we're going to have to pull out as well. Once we get that out, we're going to use the socket that is just big enough. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to tap and knock the bottom bearing set out into my hand. Okay, now, occasionally, this bearing will fall apart and leave this, this ring in the chase. And when that happens, it becomes more and more difficult to get the piece out. What I would recommend is trying to utilize the right size socket to tap it out evenly around. 
However, when the, with the offsets on the inside of this caster housing, that's probably going to be rather difficult. So what I'm going to recommend instead is utilization of a hacksaw blade. So what we're going to do is use the hacksaw blade to go in and start cutting a relief in the chase of the remaining bottom bearing. So what we're going to do is use the hacksaw blade to go in and start cutting a relief in the chase of the remaining bottom bearing. So don't worry about cutting the inside edge of the, uh, of the lip or the retaining rings because we're as long as 99% of that material stays intact all the way around it's not going to be an issue structurally. It will maintain position of the bearings and everything will operate appropriately. So understand that we may have to cut through some of the some of the sides. Now once you get the relief cut in we're going to tap and sometimes even use a hammer to knock out the remaining chase. Once that is out we can go to putting in and replacing the bottom bearing first. But before I do that, I would like to actually do some lubrication. What I'm going to do is put a little light coat of oil over the outside of the bearing set just to help it slide into the caster housing. And again, we're going to use our sockets or the old top and kind of gently tap it back into place. Once we get that set in place, we're going to remember to replace the center lining mechanism. Then we're going to put a little oil around the outside of the top bearing. And we're going to place it back in the top. And this should go in rather easily. It doesn't have as tight a tolerance as the bottom. Now we are going to push 
this back up through the center and we're going to replace the washer is what replace the stem and start the nut on top of that Now I'm going to use something to hold the roll here. Always when you can, use the leverage of the piece of equipment. Okay, now that that is done, we're going to put the cap back on. If I can get it started. For those of you that are interested in seeing how I have this jacked up off the floor, it's really quite simple. What I've done is I've taken some of the styrofoam out of the packing boxes, and taped them together, and I simply turned the uh, wheelchair on its side and slid it under there. It supports it nicely.